5 verse 1, NLT translation in the name of Jesus. Romans 5 verse 1. Amana Gadayaba. Everybody just speaking tongues more. The rebels are the Griaga. Zobrede Agas. Gredonos. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name. Romans 5 1. He says, Therefore, since we have been made right with God, or in God's sight by faith, we have been made right in God's sight. By faith, we have peace with God because because, because we jump seven times. Because we beg God. Because we cried. He said, because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. There is no reason for God not to answer me when I ask him for something. No reason. There is no reason born or given under the sun for God not to answer a child of God, a born again Christian when he or she asks God for something. No reason. There is no reason. There is no time you ask God for something that God will not answer you as a child of God. You know, the thinking of a lot of people is that once they hear things like this, the next thing they think is, what have you committed sin? It's because they are sin conscious. Must everything be about sin? Why is it any time you hear something, the first thing that strikes the person's mind is what of sin? Amen. Okay. Let's answer your question. What of sin? Since they say, what of sin? So let's answer it now. I mean, so let's answer it. You see, eh, what you and I need to understand as a child of God is that sin does not exist anymore. There is no more sin. You see how quiet everywhere is. That's a very dangerous deal. Child, don't snap me. This is a serious matter. There is no more sin. You see, when God created the world, there was no sin in the world. Was there sin in the world? No. When God created Adam, was there sin in the Garden of Eden? No. The Bible said in Romans chapter 5, because Adam disobeyed God, he sinned. No, no, so he, he disobeyed God. Because of that, his disobedience, sin came. So, sin used disobedience to enter into the world. You see, sin is not an action, it's a nature. Sin is a nature. It's the nature of the devil. So because Adam obeyed Satan, the devil's nature came into the world to remain in the world, which is sin. So, he said in Romans 5 that sin passed from Adam. It passed to all men. So any child that is born, sin just follow that child. The child did not do anything wrong. Go. As the man and woman sleep together, the woman become pregnant, sin is at the door waiting for the child to come forth. So as his entry just comes, he follow He become a sinner. So because of what Adam did, the Bible said all men were, became sinners. So you are not a sinner because you did something or you didn't do something. That's not sin. Sin is that you were born a sinner because you are born human being. Are you getting it? Alright. So God decided because of sin, which is the nature of the devil, God went to hide himself. You know, before sin happened, eh, God was visiting Adam every evening. 
So as soon as sin came, so Adam had chosen sin, the nature of the devil. So God went to hide because he can't behold sin. God cannot look at sin. He cannot mingle with sin. He cannot come and visit Adam again. So he went to hide. So he told Isaiah, because of your sin, I have hidden myself. Your sin has made God to hide himself. So God now told Moses, okay, I want to, even though sin is still there, but I still want to help mankind. I want to help man, to, you know, to free him, to help him. So God decided, okay, what we'll do is this. Animals did not sin. I don't, I don't know whether somebody was that one who, who sinned? Man. It was man. Animal did not sin. So God said, you know what? Animal is still innocent. He says, so Moses, tell them to take animal. Slaughter the animal. Let his blood atone for the sin of man. So that I can still reach man. But you see, the soul of a man is far superior to that of animal. That's why animal's blood could not take away sin. But the Kuato cover it for one year. So that within one year, God will come and help him. Shop, 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 shop. Before the blood of the animal expires, God takes off. So they were doing that all through different generations. So God decided, wait, 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 wait. I can't continue like this. I really want to be with man and help man. So you know what God did? The Bible said God sent Jesus. In Romans chapter 3, verse 25, NLT translation. By now, everybody should, should know it. Okay, put it. Romans 3, 25. NLT translation. Look at what the Bible says. It's very important. Everybody watch this. Watch this. He said, For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice. Talk to me now. Sacrifice. That means the reason God sent Jesus is to target sin. Look at the way you're looking at me now. Why did, you, why did God send Jesus? To target sin. So God's target was sin. I must deal with sin. Sin has robbed me of man. That's what God is saying. Sin now does not make me a man to fellowship together again. See, so I must deal with sin. So he now sent Jesus. He gave Jesus. He didn't give Jesus for us to come and be speaking in tongues. There's nothing wrong with speaking in tongues. That's not why he gave Jesus. He didn't give Jesus for us to build, build big houses. He said that man is a very successful man of God. He just built 10 houses. That's not why he gave Jesus. He gave Jesus because sin had dominion over man. Man was a slave to sin. Sin was his master. So, and he cannot serve two masters. So God went into hiding. So God said, okay, I'm going to deal with sin. He now sent Jesus after sin. Now the question is, uh, uh, Papa, how do you know? Uh, you know he sent Jesus after sin. Somebody ask me, ask me, ask me. All right, okay. Let me show you how he sent. Ah, I got to know. In Romans chapter 8, verse 2. Okay. See what the Bible says. Let's start from verse 2. Romans 8, 2. Book in James, sharp, sharp. Romans 8, 2. He said, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. That means freedom came from mankind from the law of sin that produces the consequences of death. How did it happen? Verse 3. See, Bible, God punish the devil. Are you, is somebody seeing this thing? Yes, sir. See, Bible, now, see, verse 3. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. Now, the law is not weak. It's the human weakness that weakened the law. Are you seeing that? Yes. All right, so we are we're all on the same page. He said, God sending his son. He now sent his son in the likeness of sinful flesh, like man. The Son of God, God Almighty, looked like man. Look at, he said, he sent him for sin. Uh, are you seeing it? Uh, so, Jesus is coming. His target was for what? For sin. Someone say sin. Say like this. Someone say sin. All right. So, what was he sent to sin against? To condemn sin. That means go and give judgment to sin and send sin to permanent prison to condemn sin in the flesh. 
So, how will Jesus do it? It's very clear. Can't you see? He will condemn sin. He will send sin to eternal imprisonment through his flesh. Of that fan, so that I don't hear too much dust. I was having a challenge with uh, this thing. <clears throat> you could do as if you use fan all the time in your house. <clears throat> I'm very sensitive to dust. Where was I? I to condemn sin in the flesh. So, guess what? God now showed Isaiah in advance. You know what God showed him? He was wounded for our transgression. Bruised for our iniquities. You see? So, the punishment for welcoming sin, that other welcomes sin, God punished it on Jesus Christ. Jesus was not Adam in the garden. No? God said, because you didn't obey me, you had to obey the devil. I will now took sin. I will punish you. He will now punish Jesus for it. Punish him so heavily. In the midst of the punishment, the devil now took the matter up. Your father wants to punish you. I will help your father to punish you. A boy, Momo. The Bible said if he had known, he would have left Jesus. Because he didn't know what was going on. God was targeting sin. Am I making sense? So, on the cross, now the devil now made them to take Jesus to the cross, to nail him. So the father said, eh? I didn't say they should nail you. I just said I will punish you for their sin. Because you want to become their sin. Yes, sir. He said, how did you get it? He said, that the devil will enter. That's why you see that Jesus said, forgive them. They know not what they are doing. They don't know what is going on. They have no idea. So the devil is wondering, what do you do? What you are doing? What are you people doing? You are your papa. What are you people doing? He's looking at Jesus on the cross. And he's asking you, what are you people doing? What are you up to? He says, Jesus says, I get out. You are not doing, I don't have time for you. My father, forgive them. You know, they don't know. They don't know what's going on. They don't know. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he said, Jesus was made sin. That means he didn't commit any sin. So on the cross, after Jesus said, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. The father now said, okay, that sin that is separating between me and them, I put it inside you, Jesus. You now remove all the sin, put it inside Jesus. So Jesus said, thank you. He said, now, I'm going to die the death of a sinner. So sin and Jesus was now hanging on the cross. So when Jesus died, that's why I say he condemned it in the flesh. When Jesus died on the cross, they removed his body to go and bury. Remember that that body is not carrying sin. The body is not a sin. So both Jesus and sin are going to the grave. When they got to the grave, three days later, the father raised Jesus back to life, but he left sin. Sin is in the grave. It's out of this world. Sin is gone. He can't come back. Because who can resurrect sin now? Nobody. The only person that can perform the resurrection resurrected only his own son. He left sin outside. So he said, because of what Jesus has done, we have peace with God. Wait, I'm taking you somewhere very serious this morning. <laughs> Look at the NLT translation of it. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did, God did what the law could not do. He sent his son in a body like the bodies of we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end of sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. So sin does not exist anymore.
You see, the prostitute on your street. Eh? No, the Bible said the problem with that prostitute is ignorance. Yes, sir. Not sin. Yes, sir. In Ephesians chapter 4, Thank you, Jerry Bishop. This is a serious matter. <laughs> if you should ask for what verse am I looking for now? He said that because of the blindness of the heart, I think in verse 17, from 16, there about, put King James. No, put King James so that I can really follow it. Uh, no. Go on, go on, go on, go on. All right. He said, verse 17. Everybody look at it. Verse 17. He said, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk. That means don't live, don't think and live your life like those who are not born again yet. Watch you. In the vanity of their mind. Next verse. Having the understanding. What? Darkened. 